Hello, everybody, and welcome to Programming Through B, Episode 4, Main Ruby Concepts. I'm your presenter, Tyler, and this is, as always, this is brought to you by manwithcode.com. So, covered in this episode, we'll be playing with Interactive Ruby, or IRB for short. I will teach you about variables, basic methods, basic classes in Ruby. Uh, so, let's get started. Um, I'm going to cover basic theory, concepts, and stuff before we actually jump into the code. That way it will be easier for you to understand later. So, Ruby is an object-oriented programming language. Object-oriented programming languages use objects. I know, surprised me too. Ruby goes beyond what most other object-oriented... Wow, let me restart that sentence. Ruby goes beyond most other object-oriented programming language because in Ruby, everything is an object. Um, other program programming languages just don't have the guts to go that far, or just didn't really think it through. It's really useful. And I'll show you exactly what that means later. Uh, in object-oriented programming, uh, it sort of models real life. Uh, everything around you is an object. Your computer, your desk, books, the moon, and people are all objects. In programming, all objects have properties called variables. These could be the color of the object, the weight, the size, or any other kind of property, or any kind of data you need to store about said object. Objects also have methods, which are sometimes called functions. I believe you can use those words interchangeably. A camera object would have a method to take pictures. A car would have a method to drive. A printer would have a method to print. I know. Makes sense, doesn't it? As well as making code easier to understand, you would also continue to appre you will also continue to appreciate other benefits of object-oriented programming further on in your programming career. So now I have some code for you to look at. So let's get started. Okay, here's the code. Um, this is a very basic Ruby program. Uh, it's structured similarly to how all Ruby programs will be structured, but it's way simpler. Um, so I. Okay, so everything followed by the hash mark is a comment. These are completely ignored by Ruby, and these are used to help explain your code and help you understand your code later on when you look back at it or when other de other developers are looking at your code. Um, so you can put whatever, after the hash mark, you can put whatever you want. Ruby doesn't care. Um, so I'm going to break it down line by line. The second line says class greeter. This, set, this means we are defining the class... And it's going to be named Greeter. Uh, next line we have def hello and then in parentheses name. This means def is define. Oh, actually, I'll get back to that. Def is define. Hello is the name of the method we are defining. And uh, name is a parameter that hello takes. And a oh, note I meant to say is all classes must start with a capital letter. Okay, now, the next line, it's a little trickier, it says put s, hello, plus uh, name. Put s means put string, our string is hello, plus name. Now, plus name, you know, you can't do math on string, so you're probably wondering what the heck does that mean. Well, plus names means we are appending the variable's name to the string hello, okay? So, now the next two lines have the keyword end. Uh, the first one means we are done defining the hello method. The second one means we are done defining the class greeter. Okay, now, below where the class greeter ends, we have the line, my name equals Tyler, and Tyler is in quotes. This means we are creating the variable name, my name and placing the string Tyler inside of it. That's what the quotes do, it makes it a string. Uh, next is person equals greeter that dot new. We are creating a new greeter object. The class defines it and then you do call the dot new method and it actually creates and instantiates the object. We're putting that new in, new object into the variable person. Finally we have the line person dot hello my name and we are sending the parameter my name to hello. <sighs> okay. Now let's run the program. If you remember to run a program uh, you open up the terminal or command prompt, change directories into where you save your program, and, and then you type Ruby in the program name. In my case, I will type Ruby episode 4.rb. 
says, Hello, Tyler, just like you'd expect it to. Um, and don't worry if you would like to type this in yourself or just copy and paste it and save it on your own computer. It will be below this video on my website and in the video description on YouTube. Okay, now back to the code. The code is actually a little longer than it has to be. I know, I did extra work for you. I did this for you because it would make it easier to understand. We could actually change the last three lines to reader.new.hello Tyler. Okay, and then we can just delete those lines. If you see, oh. Um, now we can do that this because in Ruby everything is is an expression. And what this means is that when we run greeter.new, we now have a new greeter object, like when we had person equal greeter.new. Um, and on that new greeter object, object we are running the method hello, and we don't have to put the, our string Tyler into a variable. We can just pass it into that. If you'll see, if we run this again has the same output. Isn't that awesome? Now, oops, one thing to be wary of is that Ruby has lots of different tricks like this which help you condense your code and in a lot of situations that's really good. In others, it's very bad because it can help, it can lower the readability and clarity of your code. You don't want that. You want your code to be as easy to understand as possible so when you look at it later you can go, ah, I know what that does. Okay, so, next on to IRB, or Interactive Ruby. IRB makes it easy to quickly test our code, find out if and how something works, do basic math, and write throwaway code you will only, do, only use once. To open up IRB, we'll open up your command prompt or your term terminal, and just type IRB and hit enter. And you'll see a line like this. Um, now, like I said, you can do basic math. We can do 2 plus 2. We can do 2 to the power of 6. We can do 2 times 5. Oops, 5. Or any other math you can really think of. Like, we can do stuff with sine, cosine, tangent. Uh, you know, just a bunch of different math concepts. I don't want to go into it now. Oh. Um, now, we can also write in here any valid code, valid Ruby code, that is. And so we could write the greet method again. We said, could do def greet name, put s, hello, plus name, and end, and we can call it with greet Tyler. And look, it says, hello, Tyler, and that's all nice and good. Okay, and you can do that with any Ruby code. I uh, don't believe there's any limitations to it. Okay, now like I said before, everything in Ruby is an object. Now let me illustrate y to you exactly what this means. So we can do zero dot class and find out what class a number is. In this case, it's from the class fixnum. We can do hello dot class. Oops, sorry. Wow, typing sucks today. We find out it's a string, and we can actually do string dot class and find out it's from the class class. I know, interesting. I encourage you to play around with IRB for a little while. Try writing your own methods. Have some fun with it. You know. Um, also, another really cool thing you can do is you can do like hello dot methods, and it will show you all the methods a uh, string has in this case. We can do zero, which would be a number dot methods, and shows you all the methods a uh, number has. So play around with that. Okay, so this brings us to the end of the episode. I hope it helped you. If you need any help, have questions or comments, leave a comment below or contact me at tyler at manwithcode dot com. Now, hey, don't forget to donate. I'm doing all of this for free. It actually is costing me money. I know. What a surprise. So, donate. There's a link in the video description on YouTube, and there's a link to the right of the video on my website. So, thanks for watching. Goodbye.